For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM. Um, and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Well, they go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles about, and things. And yeah. How about little sort of endangered Diane species? Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Diane Fossey of the, of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is is an ongoing experiment for me because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this um, podcast. Carl, what do you think about all this? Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to be able to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know, yeah. you, you're, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you? Or any of the MP3 things, you're concerned. Uh, it's, I'm warming to it, but... This is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him, and we're, taking, <laughs> we're trying to ingratiate him in the uh, in the gang, trying yeah. to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, I no, but, but my thing with, with iPods is... Now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need. <laughs> and now we're just messing about. They said that in 1900. Someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented. They what? said that in 1900. And how wrong were they? No, but what, what came out? What, at what point, what was invented in that year where they went, right, that's it now? The 20th century. Think what happened in the 20th century. Go on. Well, planes. Yeah, but is that a good thing? Planes and that. Do you need to? Do you need a plane really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be, instead of travelling about? War. Why? War. Well, look, wars. Wars happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, well, now we can fly. We'll go over there. So I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane. Not like. Not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is, the more the the world's got smaller, on it. Everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know. We now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. Well, I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday, and then they go, oh, I die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place, a lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yeah. Yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far to see You're it. You're absolutely right. So there you go, then. The telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where would, good you, where would you stop, then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? If we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, the oh, what, do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, you know, like, the the way that, you know, we we have kids and stuff, if it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 
78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, 78, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm going to do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not going to do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips you've, come off. You've, you've done it all now. Yeah. And then you die, right? So say if everyone had that, they lived to be 78. Mm. But then just as you die, you, you have a little baby inside you. And as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such drivel. You say, you're saying that, but if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's, that's what annoys <laughs> me. The point is, Carl, he never would. No, He'd what? never say it, that's the point. But I, if I, you I never don't, say it, if you never I say it... I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, how, how, how was it? How is there a little baby in a 78-year-old? No, what I'm saying is it's like an apple where... <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it and, and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's a, what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right and centre. It's, it's, it's controlled so that as someone dies, someone's born. But, Carl, stop. Wh whose responsibility is Look, this? If you don't want to do but it, we we'll won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way, we, we live that <laughs> way, or I is like... this a scientific experiment? What I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round so Brilliant. we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you, and there's loads of people here, and, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy, and you can't move, and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them, and, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But, but thank it you for it. The worst <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. This is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just <laughs> yes. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I'd... and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of guy. In fact, it. I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know when people die normally. Everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever. But then there's this new life brought in. It's almost like a bad news. But, good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 how why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying it, ready to go, just add water. I, I mean... Who there's, looks there's, after son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no... Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is, though, the body's always changing, isn't it? From caveman to now, or whatever. In some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like, I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying... Do you know how, like, they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one... I say, like, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about... Go on. ..that, uh, what it is... Say if I'm... Say if I'm in a, in a pub, right? Mm. And I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but go on. And uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right? And she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round, she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that, that they've found out from, like, you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since, but... since, like, man and dinosaur was knocking about. They, 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained you, I, I it. I think it's safe to assume that... You know that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explain. I mean, you it. just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you look right. They said it's from the time when like caveman was like wandering about, and he'd go, "Hang on a minute, 
and he'd look around, there's a dinosaur there or whatever, and he'd, right. he'd leg it. This is, this is nonsense. One, one, not... I hate it when people use the word when caveman was wandering <laughs> around. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> Dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? Well, you don't believe because you, you've seen... Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a Million Years B.C. Year, a Million Years B.C. or something. A Million yeah, Years yeah. B.C. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but... She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact, but why? Why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now? In a way, he's watching the Flintstones. He's, watching the Flintstones. he's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts out the saber-toothed tiger, yeah, and yeah, and he, and he, and he, and he mixes in. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why did you say that? Why do you think there must have been? There a must have been point? because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. Uh, exactly. Why, why, why didn't Hitler meet Nero? It's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. They must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. They must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. Oh. Well, uh, now time for one of our regular features. Monkey news. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. What what we're doing here is right is uh, just giving you a bit of bit of monkey news that's that's gone on right where a monkey's been involved in it, good little story in that. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the one that went into space? The first uh, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoys me with it really. Armstrong gets all the all the glory, but do you know who went up there before before him? A monkey. Yeah. And what happened is they taught it. Um, what buttons to hit at the time that like, it needed to hit them. And, and the way they did this was, like, give it bananas. It was like, hit the red button, and it hit the red button, they'd give it a banana. Right. And they go, right, reverse is the green one, hit the green one. And then they do that and go, there's a banana. And then they go, right, hit reverse, and it go, and get a banana. Right. Hit the red, so it was taking commands on, like, headphones. Right, but how are they giving it the banana? Is that how you learn to do radio? <laughs> how are they giving it the banana? What do you mean? No, oh. this is before it went. You, do, you oh. wouldn't just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm telling you the story now. So the monkey I don't sat... think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what... what uh, it wasn't it's... any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's you... called Pavlovian conditioning. However... That was to see if it would salivate or go over to no, a particular corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. <laughs> next one up. It's the next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is I'm getting a banana if I hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but billions well, of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> It's not like willy-nilly. It's not just like pop it in there. Willy-nilly, who's that? What's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because it's trained now. But oh, anyway, it's trained. So it's listen, fully trained, yeah. Go so on. what happened is, anyway... Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there. Yeah. It's got his headphones on. They're going, right, hit the green one. And uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same... <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not. It's the same... There's no way that they made uh, a, a right, spacecraft so, so can, that had a banana dispenser. <laughs> right, There's so, no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into outer mm, space, right? So what, so manned you're, so by you're, a monkey mm, with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space but you don't believe there's a little banana machine? <laughs> right, OK, See? so... So it comes to the launch day... Monkeys, monkeys sat in there, uh, everyone's ready, bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it. They go, right, hit the green button. 
right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you are you are living in a, so, a cartoon world. So the rocket goes off. Right? <laughs> this is absolute it's, bollocks. It's all going well. You are, you, I mean, I don't know what you're going to... It's, it's not going well. Going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going... rocket. There is no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. It's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button, and, it's, and it goes a little the bit left. The left button? Right, oh, so... well-known spacecraft command. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Apollo 13. Hit the left button. So it, you it, are, oh, it you goes are. left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left, and it's, it's going away. Left! It's, it's it goes going left! Up. Yeah. No, the moon. So You're going right. It goes. It goes for the moon. Everything. Everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there. It does whatever it does. It reverse. It comes back. <laughs> right. So then. You are. So, honestly, you are brain dead. So it's you are one of the most stupid people. That I would rather have mm. the monkey drive right, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back. Yeah. It does a good job and everything. It gets out. Um, and this it's is sick this of is bananas. this is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission, yeah. right? Because <laughs> it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything, the next one would have been to send man, right? So the monkey enjoyed it and it was like, well, I want to do it again, right? But they were like, so how did they know that? How did they know? Just, what just the way it looked and what have you. It was <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> just the way it looked. So, you, are, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right? So after it had done that, it was on such a high, right? <laughs> yeah. It could it could never get that high again. Turned there was drugs. nothing. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It did. It, it sort of ended up killing itself <laughs> because it could never never get that buzz that it right, got. Right. That was absolute bollocks. None of that is true. Except <laughs> they sent a monkey into space, and I'll and I'll, um, I'll check that. Absolute drivel. So, it, in your mind, it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women. And like then, it, does, it does happen. You and hear then it about was found it. Found in a motel it. room. I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh yeah. Right. No, um, who's he? Which one's he? He's uh, is he is he a medium? He can contact the dead. Is that right? He just chats to him and that sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So he mm. said, what do you want to know? I said, just just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country, and uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have, where they used to they used to like leave their own cup knocking like about? Like a tank. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody tankard. Like, Let's use a tankard if we've right, established that. Tankard, word. yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. Right. Believing so, it all. High five. <laughs> Great. So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going. Oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub, that must be a real grind. So, so every time they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> they must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that, and they were like, oh, what's the connection here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what's the connection here? Oh, God. So they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This this tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, "Leave it with me." He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, "Right, not a problem. Don't worry about it." He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? What? Dies in a crash on the way. Because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I'm meant to go. That's amazing. Derek Cora. He told me. <laughs> Carl, I have, I have, I have, I have no opinion of that story, other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure. It's of. not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of. Like, I, I, I've got a mate, right? Who uh, is, is living in this big stately home, right? And he's living in there now. He pays hundred pound a month. There's about eighty rooms, Jeez. and uh, it's this big stately house, and what have you. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down, and have a look, right?" 
And from outside, you go, oh, this is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Man of Bourne or something. You go, this is, this is impressive. But then when you get in, it's like, it's a wreck. And, and we go in, and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall, and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, oh. right? And I said, what's this here? So I wandered over, right? Got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had wrote it? Oh. Some, somebody had wrote it. I, I love someone. this. You can do it. Right, go on. Yeah, go on. So, sorry. So sorry there's, there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it, and it says, flies, right, with an arrow, flies, like, flies this way, yep. right? I think that's, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, right, which goes to this corner where there's a shelf about 3,000 dead flies on it. Oh, my God. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> Right, that's, right. that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that, and there's, there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had, uh, like, in biro and that. It looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had uh, uh, something like... Need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets, blah, blah, all this, like, old stuff for, like... And I turned it over, right, and it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> right. Now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe. You go, that's, that's, who's been in here? It's bad vibe, it's just based on the fact that your mate's in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along... Cos you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh, my God, I'm Carl Pilkington, and hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. That is weird. Flies in a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> the, the, the flies in a condom was weird It's enough. weird. I don't know but, that it's... But, but the note... The note... Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. Reading it by torchlight. You must have been terrified. It's a bit... It's a bit odd, isn't it? For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Rick, you'll be pleased to know we've already had some responses. And uh, Simon and Mark have already emailed us in this link to something that was on the BBC News website. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a remarkable story. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. That's, that's a, just the headline. That's a hell of a headline. That I mean, makes me want to know more about yeah, the story. Well, that's, what headline... that's what a headline should do. Spectators cheered as entire Cambodian midget fighting league squared <laughs> off against African Lion. Its tickets had been sold out three weeks before the much-anticipated fight. The fight was organised when an angry fan contested Yang Shimoni, president of the CMFL, claiming that one line could defeat his entire league of 42 fighters. 
Well, the fight was ended, Rick, after only 12 minutes, after which 28 of the midget fighters were declared dead. Right. While the other 14 suffered severe injuries, including broken bones, lost limbs, and they were basically but unable the, to fight. But anyway. the lion wasn't hurt? It would have seemed that the lion was OK. Oh, good. Well, that's amazing. Carl, what are your thoughts instantly? I mean, you're going to have a, a take on that. See, what's annoying me is I've sent money to Cambodia because apparently they're hungry and haven't got any energy. So what's going on? Well, it's, it's much easier to, to, to fill up a midget than it is a regular Cambodian. You know, they, mm, they, they're, they're happy on, like on a Mars I'm, I'm being cheated a bit. You were conned before with a charity, weren't you? Well, a few times, yeah. With a, what about the, the old lady? What was that? I got stopped. And it's like, uh, they, they sort of drag you in by saying, have you got a gran? And I said, no, they died and that. It's like, oh, did they die of the cold? No, she's, you know, ill, what have you, just, just old age. He said, well, what happens with a lot of people's grands is they die in the cold, right? So I was like, oh, that's bad, isn't it? Anyway, so she's chatting and she's showing me pictures of these old women who look cold, right? Saying, look at her, that's Edna. You know, she's got no family, she, she can't pay the bills and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Anyway, it goes on for about 15 minutes and you, you feel bad. You give them your bank details, right? And what happens is every couple of months you get a letter from Edna. Well, it's, right. it's not from her, it's typed up and what have you. But, but there's a picture of Edna, right, and it's saying... Oh, this December, you know, Edna's going to be extra cold. It's cold outside, she can't afford to pay the heat and what have you. Yeah. Keep going, right? So you keep paying every month, like, £5, or whatever. Get another letter a few months later, right? Edna's sat there, she's got a tan. <laughs> what do you mean she's got a tan? <laughs> well, when they said, you know, she's cold, I thought they meant for the heating, not to send her on holiday for a month. <laughs> she sat there with a the tan, I'm not joking. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just a sort of a slight problem in the printing? No, no, definitely. Sure she, it wasn't she looked well li- happy. Sure it wasn't liver failure? You see, when, when does it become, like, bad to avoid people like that? Do you know what I mean? Because some people say you shouldn't, you know, they're, they're people, they're people like us, they've just had a bit of bad luck. Well, of course they are. Yeah, I know, but I remember one on, on our estate, right, and she was a bit... What's, what's the word that you can use? Because I don't want to offend anyone. But who, I'd, I'd say... Me, men, yeah, but sort of mental homeless. Is that a term? That's the official term. That's, I think that is the, that's that is the, the new that's, official yeah. term. It's it's mental homeless itis. Right. So she uh, she lived on the estate and what have you, and she aged. Pretty... How was she homeless if she lived on the estate? Well, she sort of decided to stay around there because I think All people right. on the estate spoke to her more than people who had money. So this mental homeless woman on mm. the estate, um, and what she used to do, right? She she acted quite normal, and she used to always push push like a pram around with her, right? And everyone was like, she can't have a kid, can she? Right? And she was dead happy every day. She was up and down, walking up and down the road. Anyway, one day she got to walk past, right? turned round and looked in the pram. There was a bucket with a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, we've had an email here from a bloke. I think you're going to respect him because I think you can tell straight away from his name mm. that he's the kind of guy you'd want to hang out with. Go on. I know how much you love fun people. Yeah. Well... Paul, and he's calling himself this, Paul the Party Animal Parker, he's emailed in. He's given himself that, that, that the, moniker. Uh, right, I, I assume they're in sort of, like, quote marks, they're are in, they? They're in speech marks, yeah. Paul Brilliant. the Party Animal Parker. And he's calling himself that. Yeah. That I, I can't wait to... So I, what do you, when you picture him, what are you thinking? Millhouse. <laughs> right, OK. I, I, I think he looks like Millhouse from The Simpsons. Yeah. I, 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 he's I, working I, in sort of an IT department, maybe? Yeah, for a large organisation. Oh, I think he might still be at school. <laughs> OK, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. And, and this is the vital question. Do you believe him to be a party animal? I believe him to be a party animal is as much as a man with a long scarf that is mum knitted him <laughs> to look like... Uh, Doctor Who can be a party animal, yeah. yes. Do you think that when people are organising parties at his school, they're thinking the first person they've got to get on the list and make sure he's guaranteed uh, as You've a guest... You've got to take Paul the party animal. Because I, I, I bet he's got millions of affectations. I bet he's, he wants to be known as the one that carries around a biscuit tin. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. got the scarf. He's, he's the guy got... who only ever wears bowling shoes. <laughs> it's his thing. <laughs> it's his thing. He's a little bit kooky, it's his thing. <laughs> and uh, it is fairly interesting what he's sent in. He's found this on the web. A Serbian man who um, has invented a sex machine for women. Mm. And he's appealing to Western women to test his device. Mm. It runs on a 390-volt electric engine, simulates sex, and has a 7.5-inch artificial penis. As soon as I read this, I was thinking... It's just imagining there going, oh, thanks for coming in, yeah, OK. So there's, uh, what's going to happen is there's a penis that's going to pop out from here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to have sex with you. I'm going to stand behind the machine. 
<laughs> I've got to stand behind here. There's a lot of dials and stuff. But I don't well, want to bore you in. Well, why do you have to stand behind it? Just I can't. It's technical stuff. But I got to be behind the machine. But there's no there's no penis on the robot at the moment. It's just no, a hole. That don't worry. What happen is I'll switch the machine on. I'll go behind, and then a penis will appear. Will it be like a metal looking penis? It will be a robotic penis, but it will seem like it's a regular fleshy human penis. So you've made this sort of like robotic penis look really realistic. It's really realistic. You will not be able to tell the difference between, say, the robot one and mine, for instance. You okay, well, you I don't want to see yours. No, 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 there's absolutely not. Because, because I'm not, I've not come around here to have sex with a person. I know, you've um, come around to test the machine. Yeah, I'm that is exactly what you're going to get. Okay, a lovely well, piece you... of m mechanical action. That... <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> to a lot of people, sex is important, isn't it? You know what I mean? Not to you. Well, it serves a purpose. <laughs> but, but what... <laughs> what purpose? No, Because no. you don't want to have kids, so what a purpose? Just, just you know... Something to do in the Something evening. Something to do, isn't it? When the telly's broke. But but for years, like they've they found stuff, haven't they? Machines from like Roman times that no. served to that setup. No machines in Roman times. Like that though, the old sort of uh, knob on a stick machine thing. <laughs> The old that? Roman I knob on a stick. Uh, I'm sorry, but I watch Time that. Team every week, and Tony uh, Robinson has never done uh, that. Uh, an old knob on, a, knob on a stick machine. I just think of Julius Caesar sitting down and go, OK, Aqueduct, we love that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Straight roads, good idea. We can see the enemy coming. Yeah. What have we got there? Well, I'm glad you've asked. Plompticus. <laughs> what have we got there? W w wanklicus. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I've got here <laughs> is a yieldy knob. Um, and I've, I've put that on the end of a stick. <laughs> oh, a stick as phallus. OK, well done, Michael. <laughs> yeah, no, no. yeah, well done. Yeah. You um, are my new right-hand man, as they say. No, no, no excellent. Problem. But they do, they do do stuff like that. You've been in uh, the London Museum and that, and they've got sort of sex stuff from years ago. They've got, like, these metal pants that they used to wear. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> metal pants? Yeah, sort of Is metal. that a chastity belt, you mean? They used to make women wear them so that they could... When, when, yeah, when, no, when they had, they, had, they had them for blokes as well, though. Metal pants for blokes. Yeah, Why? I just, no, I just think they sort of like sexy metal pants. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know what you mean. What with are you sexy metal about? pants. Well, they'll have to look because they haven't got it in front of me. It's just something I remember seeing some sort of sexy metal pants that I used to wear. But what are you saying, sexy metal Come pants? On, well, that was not to British be... Museum. That was Soho. No, what? What I mean? <laughs> that was Old Compton Street. You were looking at the shop window. They always had to be ready for like battle and that, but these were a little bit sexy but protective at the same time. <laughs> I love that. So, Lancelot, are you ready? To face the Black Knight? Yeah, just, <laughs> what do you think of these? Huh? I Will just there, want to look good on the battlefield. Will and there be women watching, cheering us on? Well, you're not going to fight like that, are you? What about your... your I'm going to wear your... nothing except these sexy metal pants. But you, what about your chest is exposed? No, yeah, I can... Well, it's a good chest, I'll be working out. Yeah, I know, but what I mean is you want to. You want, you want metal been, all I've over. I've actually been lifting up the round table <laughs> every week. I just work out, do that about four times a day. But that <laughs> machine, right? Why... Did it have to be a woman? Or could they have got a little gay fella in? I, I don't know. Let me just check. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, doesn't actually specify the small print here. Yeah. I love that. Why do you want to see a little gay fella be... I don't know. I don't want to see it. I'm just saying they're sort of more... Why do, uh, uh, Carl, why do you want... I don't want to see Why it. do you want to watch want to a gay it. man get buggered by a robot? I wasn't the one typing in gay machines on the internet, finding <laughs> stuff out about them. It's not Steve a gay was. machine. You just made it into a gay machine. Yeah. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted to pleasure women with this machine. Oh. You're saying, can I see oh. a little gay fellow get a robotic cock up his arse? <laughs> You're the one requesting that, Carl oh, Pilkington. I don't want that. I'm just saying that. You're the one that wants to see gay men with metal stuff up their arnus. No, oh, what I'm saying is they're more up for a bit more experimentation than... What are you saying? Why is that the case? Why? Why do you say that? No, just, just, they, they just, you know, butt plugs and that. I mean, what I'm saying is... What, what, you can't just say butt plugs and that. It, I'm just it, saying that they... I reckon they'd be up for it. That's what do you know I'm about saying. butt plugs? I, well, I don't know anything about them. I, I just remember seeing an advert for some once in a sex shop. <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you doing? No, I wasn't. I was just walking past. I was walking past the sex shop and that. Mm. And you know, you're sort of looking. Why, 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 why were you walking past a sex shop? Just because I was on the way to work and that, and I passed one, and there okay. was a little sort of... One, it was open early, which I never understood. Right? It was about 8 o'clock in the morning. Right? And who's thought, rushing who's, out to Buck yeah, Who yeah. needs them now? Right? Yeah. But I, sort I must of get a... a bagel and some poppers on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I walked past it, and it had a, like a little post-it note, or postcard type thing, and it was like, popping now, buy an item, chucking some free butt plugs. <laughs> And I, I didn't know what they for. I didn't. I've, I'd never heard of them before. But all I'm saying is, I've since found out what they do do with them. What and do they if do, they with do, them? do that with them? Then yeah. give them a go on that. <laughs> Another email here. It's an interesting fact. I'm hoping it's true. 
America's first nudist organisation apparently was founded in 1929 by three men. Now, what intrigued me when I read that is the fact that it's clearly three blokes just trying to meet some nude women. They're all 52 balding. <laughs> exactly. With little, uh, uh, sort of those gold rim glasses. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just wandering around, and it's all quite saggy down there, and they're just knocking on doors saying, we've just set up an organisation. It's perfectly above board, completely yeah. legitimate. It's a, it's a nudist organisation. Um, you got any women in there that want to come and join us? Because we haven't got really. any female members at the moment. Got any women in there interested in, you know, volleyball oh, or I trampoline? I can't, I can't be doing without me. You hate nudists, don't you? Nudists. I, d I don't understand what, what it's all about at the end of the day. And here's something, right? Do you know, like, when you're a bloke nudist, mm. right? Do you ever get any who just have, like, a small knob? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the question. What's that? What's your point? Well, you know, are there any blokes who are knocking about who just have a, a normal-sized knob or maybe a bit smaller than a normal um, <laughs> uh, who, who are happy wandering about <laughs> showing off what, what they haven't got, if you know what I mean? I don't think nudists are just doing it because they're so proud of their knob. <laughs> no, but there's got to be a little bit of that in it, isn't there? Just saying, most blokes who, you know, nudists, mm. they must be pretty confident in themselves to, you know... I, I looked once. What? Where are you going? What is this? It's natural, that's what I'm saying. What do you mean? This is Carl, Carl takes a sneaky look at no, mencocks.com? No. No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's natural. Where was this happening? You're in a, so you're in a gym? No. A lot of guys are getting changed and no. you're just checking you're, out their you're, you're, you're at your bedroom window with a pair of binoculars <laughs> no. and there was a little fella across the road getting I was, changed. I was at some night out once. Go right? on. So you were um, at heaven and you were in, in the toilet. It was some night out and uh, some some people come running on the stage, right? Some music started coming on and these four people ran out. It was two women. So two you're at blokes. a gay strip club? It wasn't gay in that. It was just a normal night out. Well, you know, some sort of party night out. Right. These These people come running on, right? You got two women, you got two blokes. Right. They whip the knickers off, the fellas whip their undies off. At the same now, time? Yeah, all at the same time. Was it like, like, a, that, was like, it like a choreographed thing? So Go that, that happened, and all I'm saying is, right, before I had a look at the woman's bits, right, I just had a little cheeky glance at the fellas. Why? Why? Just checking it out, just seeing is everything normal down Why there. Why weren't your eyes drawn instantly to the ladies' bits? I, I, no, I, don't believe me, I had a look at that. All I'm saying. But you went to the guys first. Just, just. I didn't know how long pants were going to be left off for. <laughs> so you didn't want to miss your opportunity, is what you're saying. You saw a window of opportunity to see some men's bits, and you thought, "I better take it." No, no, because this may never happen again. No. But... So what happened? So you, you, there's there's two women, look. two men, right? Um, I don't know what sort of event this is where you're looking at anyone get their knickers and pants off. I don't know why you're looking at all. Night, so huh? you go, you go, right? There's knickers and pants off, right? Let's check out the the, the 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 knob and testicles first. You're telling me you've never like when you've been in a gym or anything, you've not just sort of turned your head, had a look, and gone, all right, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So let's just get this question right. Have we ever been in a gym and just taken a sneaky glance at a man's genitals? Is that your question to us? Right. For me, it's the same as when you see someone who's a bit odd, two heads or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest. If I was in a gym and a bloke came in with two heads, I'd look. I, well, I'd, try, I'd get a sneaky glance in the mirror. I'd go... Oh, sorry, but you'd look at his genitals or his two heads? His two heads! Or would you sneaky look at the heads and then think, I wonder if he's got two cocks? And just... <laughs> I got to have a look there. If, 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 if I tell you what, and now I admit it, if I'm ever in a gym and a naked man with two heads walks in, mm. I probably will check out the genitals as well, just to make sure that he's got two of everything. Can I tell you the thing that always freaks me out? I do sometimes go to the gym, and I live in North London, and the thing that always freaks me out is if there's a, a an elderly man, often quite short, mm. um, I'm always freaked out because there's at least two I'm aware of who've got very, very large penises. And I always find that really disturbing because I sometimes you can't you know you can't help but notice because it's like Godzilla coming through the <laughs> change room. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so so that go. I do admit that's the only instance where my eye has been naturally drawn to it. Do you know what annoys me in gyms where people walk round happily naked all the time, whistling? Yeah. They get weighed naked, pop a towel on, and take off yeah. three ounces. How exact have those measurements got to be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Pop a towel on. I mean, yeah. unless you're going on the space shuttle. <laughs> I reckon you could give or take a couple of uh, couple of stone. Yeah, couple exactly. Of yeah, yeah. Absolutely right. Well, we've we've put that to bed. Carl, can I ask you a question? Go on. I know this is what a lot of the fans are already wondering. Is there going to be some monkey news today? There's yeah. got to be. Of course there is. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Question. Well, I don't want. I, I'm worried because maybe this will steal your thunder. But uh, Sarah has emailed this in uh, uh, a chimp mauling under investigation. 
I think you're concerned because this actually fuses two of our greatest features, Monkey News and Knob News, oh. into just one into one seamless whole. Oh. Investigators said they are trying to figure out how two chimpanzees that viciously attacked a visitor at an animal sanctuary escaped from their cage. This is the grim bit. The chimps chewed off a man's nose and severely mauled his genitals and limbs. Why did they go for his genitals? Both of them did as well. Eh? Both of them. Did you say two chimps? Uh, no, you're right, yeah, it was chimpanzees too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if both of them went, they just saw that they're dangling away and they... Uh-uh, they you just go went, for the nose? Yeah. Uh-uh, mm. I go for his bollocks. Uh-uh. And then what, what accent have they got there? I don't chimps? know. Were they kind of New York gangster chimps? They're like <laughs> soprano <laughs> chimps. <laughs> what, what happened to them anyway? Um, well, unfortunately, they were shot dead by the authorities. You see, oh. that, that annoys me a bit. I know, well, again... What are you talking about? They're attacking people's gonads. I know, but they were happy in an African jungle a couple of years ago. That's what yeah, they do, the... isn't it? That is what they do. But why aren't they just sort of tranquilised? Where was Why this? Why have was I this been accused zoo? like it was my fault? Just because I happen to be reading... Sarah, who emailed it in, thought it should be getting a volunteer. It just annoys me how one way it's kind of like, you know, we're trying to save the pandas, and then the next day someone's shooting them or whatever. I've, I've talked about this before, about St George killed the last dragon, right? No, right, it didn't exist. It's the same thing, though. <laughs> no, no, there was, there's never been any dragons. No, it's a mythical creature. Well, you don't By know By mythical, that. it means we made this up, like the unicorn. Mm, well, I, I... I don't even... What was your point about the dragon? What's that got to do with because this? Because I'm, I'm saying now, like, why is it all right to be going around, going mental with a gun, shooting all the monkeys and killing them? Because one day we're going to run out. This or, was an animal sanctuary, though. So presumably they had quite a cushy time there because most of the ones I've visited, they've always got it easy. They're but hanging around on tires, they've got comfy chairs, they're wanking. <laughs> <laughs> they're going berserk, they're loving it. But hang on a minute, you've just answered your own question there. You said they're in a sanctuary, so they haven't had a good upbringing. So they're going to be a bit more like madder than other monkeys, aren't they? Because that's where the ill ones go, isn't it? Isn't it? Sorry, what do you understand by sanctuary? Well, I've been to one for seals. It's not like a borstal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He thinks it's a borstal. He it's thinks like scum. That, no, yeah, yeah. Like, like, they did some bad stuff in the jungle. <laughs> exactly. And they, they had a little monkey core, and they went, <laughs> send him to borstal. Yeah. So, well, what is it then? No, it's a monkey sanctuary where, it, it, like, like a haven. Well, it's not right. a haven, is it? It's got a bullet in the head. <laughs> Talking of. Uh... Eating knobs. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of uh, one of our leaders. Sure. Well, you saw her in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. Kangaroo uh, penis there, dried. She couldn't even get... It was so tough, she couldn't even get through it. And then she... <laughs> eventually, she <laughs> eats it. What, was it, it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she... What do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just... I mean, I, I, I watch it. I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But... What what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, I couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right, they're eating that at, like, half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which is worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if I was there and Ant and Dec said, right, Carl, eat the knob, I'd go, hang on a minute... Gives a few hours, let me get some rice and that on my belly, and just sort of fill me up a little bit more. I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be happier then. It's just it's just that thing of, you know, you, you, just, you, you, you don't want to eat you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm, I'm saying like I, I could eat I could eat a knob at night, but just cut that there. We'll loop that. If any if any uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote. I could eat a knob at night uh, by Carl Pilkington. No. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix. Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer, and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going, and then we could oh, just but... send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure people are really popular. Please, please, anyone, send us. You know uh, uh, that that looped with a nice little you know uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying, "I could eat a knob at night." Rick, it's that time again. It's what everyone's waiting for. Can you do the jingle for us? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you... Right, this week, the monkey news is about, you know, we all know, like, you know, there's monkeys knocking about that aren't happy in, right, this, in yeah. this country. Sure. It is a big problem, that. yeah, it's an epidemic. So they've, they've set up, like, this, uh, this place... OK. ..where they all go... The ones that aren't happy in a zoo and what have you, it's getting them down. 
Um, they can phone a number and they'll come and pick them up. Pop them in this this house place, right? And basically, they they can run riot in there. Yeah. They get freedom to sort of cheer themselves up. There's three people running this place, right? So these monkeys, big house and that. PlayStation, uh, anything they want. Gym, all that lot. Swimming. Gym. One of them wanted to mess about with the woman's breasts. Right? Which woman's breasts? The woman who works there. Right. Mm. Right. And... Um, she was like, right, pack it in, you know, we've all had a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> you've been sure. in the gym and everything. She obviously, you know, got a bit excited and that. Up, he yeah. was fired up and that, ready yeah. for some more action and that. He's trying to have a go on, on this woman's breast, right? She was like, have no. a go. She was like, no, you're not doing that. Pack it in and all that. The boss who's running the place was like, uh, come on, let him have a go. No. Right, you're talking shit. I am so, so anyway, right, so he's there. And he's, so the uh, boss says, yeah, you the can have a group. Saying, yeah, the boss is saying, let him have a Come group. on, Rita, if Monkey wants to play it with nipples, <laughs> let him. So she's like, I'm not happy with this, and he's going, come on, you know the rules here, we've got to cheer these monkeys up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we've got this to, is absolute we made it. Actually, no, and, and uh, in the end, because she didn't allow it to happen, the fella bloke sacked her, got someone else in. I want to see the advert he put in the Guardian oh, oh. media page. I love that. Right. Woman wanted to let Chimp feel tits whenever it wants. <laughs> well, it's all up there. You're talking absolute shit again. Well, we'll see. That is no way mm. that happened. few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ..and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Do you know the other week when uh, I came up with, like, a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that? Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arts. It was, but... it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, the, the mm. world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is people live till 78. I don't know how you can enforce uh, that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they oh, die. Right. It, it wasn't yeah. a theory. It wasn't an idea. Uh, it was the ramblings of a mental you, you case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Just say. If, if, if that's a no, right? I've been thinking it about... It is a no. What about if we do it the other way, right? Ah, oh, go on. Somehow, I don't know how A yet. kid has an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's going to be, isn't it? A child <laughs> give birth to an old man. No. Hey. What I'm saying is, right... Go on. Work the other way round. Come on, then. So if, if somehow we can inject something... <laughs> In, in like, a, a body that's just died, right? Listen to this. Imagine this, but look, imagine this is notes. So when, they ha when he hands it into the Nobel people yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something. Something HO2. Right. So, anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. So what happens? She sort of wakes up, Amazing. right? And she works the other way. So, like, she might be 77. Yep. 
and then she'll have a birthday. She's seventy six, and she's working that way. Right. If you know what I mean. Okay. Are, are you with me? No, keep me. Because, because the thing is, you've got. <laughs> I no I'm idea. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pip uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is No, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. And this it's is like, what this is it. Let me just tell you the, the ending, because the endings works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die mm. at the age of seventy eight. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of You're not scared of dying because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So you've missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her 20s, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the, that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're 20 and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff to, to, than, than she did on the way up? Because she's already lived 78 years, hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once, and she grew to her ears, then someone then once st someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. <laughs> no, we'll forget all that bit. Oh, I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying so is... So she died and she doesn't remember all her... All her this is a new life, is it? Let She's... me just leave you with this. Right, you're talking shit. Explain yourself. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, I it, then. We'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we? Can we all agree on that, guys? No. Shall we, shall we agree to leave it as it is? Is that all right? Because I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's... it's I mean, you're a fucking maniac. A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat... That and will help uh, them for years And it's, it's like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah, but, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are, they, are they happy with the present over there? Like, the people who are getting it? You, you're an idiot. What, you think an African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied round it <laughs> and they go, oh, look what Santa brought us. Look, and that mince pie is gone and that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, 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 but what I'm saying is, does, does that... Fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when? not that they want a goat, it's that they need a goat. Do you think... What right, do you think it. this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> oh, just arbitrarily they're gonna, giving they're goats to they're people. They're going to say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, let me put myself in, in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any. But, but say, say, <laughs> say I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, right, over there. Right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day. Right, I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right... <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. <laughs> Don't they say, like, having a, having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it? Well, I'm assuming it's all above board. The goat's had its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? To, what, What's the main? What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right now, wouldn't it be easy to to just send them a bottle of milk <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it? That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat. That was happy over here. Suddenly, it's on barren land. No grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> You didn't send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? So, so, so yeah, let's do, this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> then you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's going to look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, what am I doing here? <laughs> Definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin are starting plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid, mm. and they, you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle. 
into space. Carl, thoughts? Go into space? Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what, you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking, you don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you on holiday... you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. So you don't take luggage, right? <laughs> I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what 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 is the point. I think it's the view. I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's it's all that thing about man conquering nature, and and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. All that way just for the view. Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that, I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said, Carl, go up I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's going to say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That would be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the yeah, apes. Yeah, he would love to go that. to the... Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but, <laughs> but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right, yeah. either of you, yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like... Well, this goat, is a lot annoying, because we've got you a trip <laughs> to space and together. a goat. Yeah. yeah we... <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet... Right. Not... Go, you are on another planet, mate. No, no, but do you know what I mean? It, be, it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, because I, I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the, the Virgin <laughs> yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there. There was one bloke in the rocket, right? The other two wandered off, had a, had a walk about, seeing what rocks they could find. Right? And that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't know. I, <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what I think he's trying to say? He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, OK. Now, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest evokes an emotion. Yeah. yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is... Do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> That's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, even if like my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. someone's going to turn up. No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm not alone. always. <laughs> Because I've knocked on your door when you've when you've been stood there with... Yeah. No, he's yeah, taking I, his trousers off. No, I did it especially, oh, knowing, right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you, think he, do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out? Or, or did he go, well, you know, no-one's watching here? 
Do you reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt. And also, lonely. did you did you float around um, with your cock and balls out? <laughs> Carl, if you could have a superpower like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, X-ray vision. Flight, invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength, intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake. No, no, but I'm just saying... It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or do you know what I mean? No. Oh, uh, what because, do you wish you could no, do that's no, impossible because, is the question. No, because, or uh, uh, no. out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. Is what <laughs> with I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So would it w well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh, come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes because they can they can I know, but it always freeze they, things. They're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. Superman didn't ever tell Lewis and that. <laughs> Who's Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Yeah. Oh. It's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> Lewis! His little secret <laughs> chum! Yeah. 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 <laughs> Alright, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Hulk, he wasn't happy! <laughs> it's true, he's got a theme. He has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Just Let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> OK, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant... And, and, why... it's, put, and it's put to such <laughs> it's brilliant, brilliant use. <laughs> it's really well done! And why, why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? I don't know, you could sort of <laughs> go, in, go in shops when they're shut. So you don't have to go. How would you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. <laughs> oh yeah. And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. So hang on. So that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak well, into? No. Never mind. No, hang on. Let's just. You want to sneak into HMV, right? Wait for twelve hours <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> oh, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't, I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this. It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. <sighs> not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Just going through a few more of these uh, emails. This one's from uh, Kent from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he um, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin yeah. Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from it, the 1800s. He was it, a, a sort of thinker, it, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a money. big political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill a doc, or the $10 yeah. bill or something. Yeah. So he's, no, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers. Uh -huh. And he came up with the mantra, waste not, want not. You must know waste not, want not. I mean, that's just... Do you I, understand I, I, the phrase waste not, want not? Uh, no, not really, no. What, what does it mean? I've never used it. It's yeah. like, uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it and therefore... You, you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So he was a bit of a well, hoarder. If you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> he you was won't... a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he ever said? 
No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profound so why things. Is that one he did remembered? experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more, inventing electricity, than someone... He didn't just... invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying, well, it's not want not. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas some would argue that waste not want not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more... We should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, and say... If he could, well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Right, we'll, we'll make another one. We'll do that next week. time. All right, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. OK, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you... Do you know what that means? I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who, who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were well, one of those few yeah, that I... gave so much for so many, i.e., it means the, these these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person in the world, and they Brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who who gave up his life, right? I'd want a name check. I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives. Well done on that. See you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in. Yeah. You made up a word. You want to be bungled in? You made up a word. See, that's it. You see, we've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. Right, do you know we've we've chatted about. Uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train, Euston. Yeah. Right? Got the train, walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right? Good charity worker. Yeah. Right? He, he, nice looking fella, he's got his suit on, the tie and everything, quite respectable and that, right? Look down at his bucket, all the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right? On the front of the bucket, right? He says, collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? What, the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why is some fella <laughs> taking his time out, right, his own time where he could be at home? Why? <laughs> <laughs> some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why, why, do you know what I mean? What, what do you think, just give them the buckets? Well, what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that? <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. <laughs> Cut out the middleman. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. that on there themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger, uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness. Um, just possibly too too depressed to get up, put a suit on, and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then, right, I was thinking thinking about that, right, and I was walking down walking down the street in London with Suzanne. Saw a little homeless. Well, I didn't see the homeless bloke, right? I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway. <laughs> but here we go, right? Walk past it. Right. You're not going to believe this. Go on. Homeless. Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not having to go, right? But have you ever seen... Uh, do you know what I mean? That, that was a shock I really don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I, I, I hate to say it, but I must say, I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. What? Weird, isn't it? <laughs> well, what, I, what, what, said, I was at walk, walk past and I said to Suzanne, did you see that? She went, what? I said, just look back there. She said, what? what? I said, that homeless fella, look back at him. She said, what? I said, he's Chinese. <laughs> and she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point. Of course she did. She, she said that to shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you. Rick, it's that time again. It's what the whole world is waiting for now. Is it monkey week. news? It is monkey news. Please perform live the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news, you There we go. Right then, well, uh, got an email from John. Um, you know, if you've got any monkey news going on in your area. Uh, <laughs> just let us know. God, just, amazing! Just, but there's a, there's a TV channel in, uh, in Moscow, mm. right? And I think they had a bit of bad luck or something, a lot of redundancies and that, right? And whoever was in charge of it got a bit mental and got rid of loads of people, right? Yeah. And uh, they come in the next day and they were like, right, are we ready to go live and that? 
and someone comes running in with a clipboard saying, <laughs> we, we haven't got any people left right, to present. Oh, this such is nonsense. Right, but right, i tell you what. Right, OK, carry on, carry on. So, so he goes, what? If just one employee <laughs> turns out to be Simeon and is doing a good job, I'm never doing this radio show again. So this TV channel, you know, he's having a lot of problems and that. He, they've got to go live, right? He's like, what am I going to do? Anyway, for some reason, right, there was a chimp knocking about. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, that's the key piece of information, no, boy, but we didn't, it, get it, it. Matter, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't it matter. Doesn't matter. It, doesn't it doesn't matter. Imagine anyway. if that was in a film. <laughs> and they're going, well, I can't see where this plot goes. Well, he's just there. He's so, just there. So anyway, so he sort reason. of says, get, get it in a suit, right? Why? So... <laughs> Because they're running out of ideas, the clock's ticking, they've got to go live with something. What do you mean? What, what he's is presenting? It a news programme? Well, he's listen, presenting. Listen, it's a chat show. <laughs> I'm not. They can't again, talk! Don't have a go at me, have a go at John, who sent this in. Right. And, and this Be quiet, is... let's hear it. Let's hear it again. So, anyway, so like I say, so going live, five, four, three, two, one, what have you. Chimp sat there on the chair. Um, he was like, look, let's just get through tonight's show and worry about this tomorrow, right? <laughs> Look. So they put a chimp in a suit. Where, what, was that handmade or were the sleeves a bit short on him? You idiot, think. So, so anyway, it's sat there, right? And they're going, right, here we go. Good luck, everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, chimp's there. What programme is this? It's a chat show. Oh, but who's, whose chat show is it? Well, it's, it's the monkeys. I like the fact that it's they... the monkeys now, is it? <laughs> Look, I, I, like, say... I like the fact that they put the chimp in a suit. It's like, no one's going to take this chat show seriously if he's not dressed up, <laughs> if he's not smart. <laughs> slovenly, look at that, <laughs> slovenly ape. So anyway, oh. let's, 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 you know, get to the point of it and that, right? So anyway, so they, they go on, right? It's all going... going Didn't bleaker. happen. There's no, no way this happened. Here's a moment, fundamental so anyway. question. How was the chimp asking questions? Um, not, not sure about that bit, but <laughs> all I've got is the stuff that was on the news site for this. Like I say, I've, I've given But it's you, rubbish! Yeah, but I've given you some facts. I've no, told no, no. you, there's a TV channel in Moscow that's having problems, right? I've, I've explained that no, bit. No, it's just rubbish. They've got rid of presenters, the monkey's sat there, right? Don't worry about it anyway, I'm telling you, it goes all right. All right. All right. Oh, so it goes anyway, okay, in case you were worried, Rick. He's sat there, right? Absolute shit. They get shit. to the first break, they're like, can't believe it. Right? You know, viewing figures and that, they're loving it, right? What, no, what, so how did they know the viewing figures in the break? Please and do not interrupt so the news. What, does it, what did the chimp do in the it, first half? They, they, had a, they had a big guest on that, that week. And what, and what did they do, just talk to Who himself? They walked on. So Cher comes I'm on. Not, I'm yeah. not sure, but say if it is Cher, right? No, right. what? The main gaffer is like going, oh, Cher's going to go mental at us, right, for putting Say it is. No, it is Cher. It, no, in Cher. his mind, it's Cher sitting there talking to a chimp in a suit. So anyway, she And they're filming off. it for Moscow TV, and the ratings are going through the roof. <laughs> Presumably there's a translator, because Cher doesn't speak either Russian or chimp. <laughs> so she comes off, right, and the bloke who's in charge is like, she's going to go mad. She's going to go mad here. She walks up, she goes, I love that. <laughs> She said that's one of the best interviews, right? So anyway, they decided, right? It went so well, kept him on. He's still there. I love the fact that Cher was an idea that Steve threw up and now she's going, I love that, I love that, I love that, Jim. Get oh. me back there. I want to go to Moscow. Never mind. Don't, Unbelievable. Don't, don't have a go at me. Have a go at John. But, you know, if you've got any monkey news, send it in. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. 
Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Um, I got a text from Carl yesterday, Steve. A text from Carl, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read it to you. OK, see you to Moz for a face rub at 6.30 then. No bum tubes, though. So I was intrigued and I called Carl and said, I think you've just sent me a text by mistake. What's the explanation of that? My mate, right, Russell, he just said, he said, you know, you, you, there's things that go on in life that you need to experience. Yeah. He said, just, just pop along and... Uh, I didn't say yes straight away. What's a face rub? You mean a facial? Where you lay down... You just clean your face with a flannel yeah. and that. So it's... you're going to go lie down with another man and have your face filled Well, no, it. this is what I was saying to him. There's, there's a couple of questions. I didn't just say yes straight away. I questioned it. I said, well, I'm not that happy with this. So I said, look, there's nothing weird going on here, is there? I said, it's not a house, is it? It's a proper <laughs> clinic and that. He said, yeah, it's proper. You wear a, a dressing gown and that. I said, well, I'm not that So he's already that. got you in the dressing gown? Yeah, well, I haven't agreed to that. Today I've worn a little round polar neck sort of jumper so I don't have to take it off. It's not going to get in the way of my face. I made sure I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. I'm not taking this off. They can put the dressing gown on top of this. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's a woman who rubs my head. I don't know if it's a bloke or, or whatever. Well, the thing is, you get extra, don't you, for your face rub, because your face goes all the way back over oh. the top of your head down to the back of your but, neck. But all I was, so you've got a big face, haven't all, you? All I was saying to him is, I'll have the face rub, but I don't know if, if once you're in there, right. they try and sell you the old... Uh, the old... The, uh, the bum tube thing. What, what's what, the bum tube? The, is that a euphemism? What are you talking about? The thing where they pop a tube in and put coffee in your belly and it cleans you out and that. So An enema? Why, why would you have that? I don't. I'm not. I don't want it. I don't. I don't think Why you not? need to. Just because I think I've said to you before about, you know, you, you don't need to be that clean inside. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind washing my face. <laughs> what what occasion do you need where you're that cleaned out? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And well, it, it, it's always a clear tube and that, and you see all the stuff whizzing past. I don't understand why it's clear. I don't know why you've got to see what's coming out of you. Like it's you know like the generation game, making notes of what's whizzing past. Forget it. <laughs> I was watching uh, some different TV, saw an amazing documentary, it was called Tribes. This guy, and he goes and lives with different tribes around the world, these small little indigenous people. Mm. And uh, there was one, he went, to, he went to Papua New Guinea in Indonesia, right, Carl? He lived with the Kombai tribe, all right? Now, this Papua New Guinea is an extraordinary place because it is one of the only places left on Earth that hasn't been fully explored. There are parts of it that it's just blank on the map because they, they've never explored there. They don't know what's there, they don't know what's going on. So, firstly, that must already freak you out. Imagine that. 21st century, they have no idea what's going on down there. But do they, do they need to know if there's nothing going on? <laughs> well, they, they don't know what's going on. There could be stuff going on. No, but there's, there's no chance that they'll go, we haven't been over there, and someone goes and there's, like, an Arndale centre. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to be there, is it? So there's no... Well, no I'll point. tell you what is there, OK? There's these various small tribes. Some of these tribes are still cannibals, eating people from other tribes. Do they know they could move on? Have they got a telly? Or have they, have they seen a telly and gone, I'm not up for that? Or are they just... Are they saying... It's not the Amish. They haven't chosen this. But what this. is the difference between the Amish and these people? Well, the Amish are a, a group of people that choose to live in that way. These people are just essentially untouched by civilization. I mean, they do have interaction with civilization and people do come there, but they, they still live in this very, very almost prehistoric way. They did buy a telly, but there was nothing on because there isn't any uh, broadcasters. They couldn't plug it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. an absolute nightmare. Yeah. But there was one guy, OK, now he uh, said that his brother was dying. This was a couple of years ago, right? His brother was dying. He said to his dying brother, what happened? Why are you dying? This guy said it was a bloke in another village. OK, he goes over to the other village, he kills this other bloke, right? He eats him, or eats bits of him. Uh, the other village gets a bit annoyed. They go, what's going on? Why did you kill this bloke? They went, he went, sorry about that, right? They said, well, you need to make it up to us. He gave him a pig. <coughs> they said, a pig's not enough. They gave him five pigs, so five pigs apparently made up for the fact that they'd killed one of them. They said, well, hang on, what are you going to do with but this bloke's wife? Why, why were they bartering? Why didn't they just get the police in and say, what's, what's going on? What yeah, police? What? Yeah, yeah, what, why didn't they call in Kojak? Because he'd have sorted out, wouldn't he? What I mean is, right, they're miles away from anything, but it doesn't sound like the great place to live, right? Could they not move? Could one of them go, <laughs> do you know what, I'm sick of this. I, I'm, I'm moving or whatever and go to a proper city. How far away 
is this um, these Papa people um, <laughs> to, these Papa to, people. To, to the next to the next. They're like, like the Smurfs. They're very like the Smurfs. But how, how many miles away from a like a place with a normal life going on? But think about this, Carl. Firstly, they don't speak the language. So they don't have any practical skills. They've got no experience of civilization. So even if they chose to go and live in one of these cities, what can they do? How can they function? I think there's some bacteria that has better lives than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be offensive. Why? <laughs> OK, how about... This is the one of the weirdest things. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things, right? <laughs> People, an yeah. entire race just of people. Dismiss. No, just no, no. dismiss. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not having a go, but I'm just saying I, I wouldn't fancy it. Is what I mean. But they don't mean? know of nice. another world. How can they imagine that they could? Oh, I'll tell you what. This is boring. I'm tired of, of hunting for food and, and eating fish from the river. I'll tell you what. I'd like a world where there's iPods and room service. I'm going to go and move to New York. They're not thinking like that, are they, Carl? Because they don't know. About <laughs> people go to these places on holiday now. They like a little bit of danger. They like to see how the others live. Mm. So all I'm saying is, we know they exist. Yeah. The Papa people, maybe people aren't going there. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like the best place. You know, I can't imagine it having a, a tourist board or anything, right? But would they accept me if I popped over there and, you know, with Suzanne in Papa? Well, OK, this is, this is one of the things that they, they do, OK, which is a tradition you may have to do. These uh, combine, right, they invert their penises. So they push their penises back up inside their bodies. Like a sock. What for? Well, Keeps it's... it out of the way. Of what? Well, if you're running through the undergrowth chasing a, a, a hog, <laughs> you don't want it clapping away, you know. But, but it's also become a kind of ceremonial thing, so if you were over there, you may well have to try it yourself. You, you would have to try it yourself. If you went there, you'd have to try it Definitely. yourself. But even cavemen had little pants on. Why, why haven't they... Whoa! Whoa. Uh, Slow down. Rewind. <laughs> what do you Again, mean? Again, you've been watching the Flintstones. No, 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 it's just, you know... Is it a leopard skin pair of pants that's actually right. quite a... Go on. But, but it's a well-known fact that they wore, like, bear pants or whatever. Bear pants? <laughs> what do you mean, just, bear just, pants? Just, no, just... no, 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 listen, you are, you are a qualified uh, anthropologist, so what... Um... I, mean, I mean, that you know, you, when, whenever you see them on footage or in a museum... Footage? Or, yeah. <laughs> whenever or, you uh, see that early it's documentary shaky, footage. It? It's black and white as well, isn't it? Caveman footage. Uh, uh, you always see them wearing a little bit of fur, fur little pants and that. So... What I'm saying is, even though, what what year is it to these um, people in the woods? What, I mean, what... I don't know what this conversation don't is know. anymore. I, he's, he's just clutching at straws. His mind, his, uh, it, it, it's like um, a fly, his mind, isn't it? It's just buzzing round, it's trying to find a window. It, it, it is just it's like... hitting against pieces of information, but they're <laughs> yeah, just bouncing yeah. off. Yeah. Dazed to perplex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St James's and those really beautiful shops around there. And I went in one shop, you had to um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. They came down and it's like a, a iconoclastic sort of shop and they they found things from churches and uh, nearly all Russian, 16th century pieces onwards. This beautiful uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues. And I went, oh, it's beautiful. And as I was looking round, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go, What's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask of a man who's clearly in antiques, yeah. um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century, uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? Is that, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what does he want to say? Oh, my shirt. What, what, <gasps> what were you, you thinking? for? Uh, I think it's an all right question, cos he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there and he kept going on about the old stuff. Do you want me to say? Well, what's, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was Do you know what he said? It? The other question he asked him, he said, how often do you get new stuff in? And I said to him, why did you ask that? He said, well, I was thinking, if you've got antiques and you sell it all, what's left? Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making... He said, because they're not making any new stuff. What does that mean, they're not making any new stuff? But I know for a fact no-one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go, I need some old Russian wood. 
Because it was brilliant. No, it was Steve. No. it was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff. There, it's there's mm. um um uh, these things uh, from the 16th century of sort yeah. of like saints and monks, and they're carved. But and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was him, I'd go. Do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shot. Because seriously, <laughs> it's just piled up, up piles of on piles of like old. Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But think of, a man, just think of a man 400 years ago that carved this, that carved this, uh, you know... No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh, look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what I'd love. What? A bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying they like... I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, them old drawings on, like... It was like a panel from a church that someone had uh, that okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was, like, you know, from sort of, like, 1590 or something. Yeah. And it was this... Uh, a, a picture of this uh, this mm. saint, wasn't it? So 1590. It could be from any time, really. So there's this one there, right, leaning up against the wall. And mm. uh, <laughs> most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little... Right, can I just stop with there? Lenin. Right, okay. all right then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right, little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. He said he got more. This is that, that term. That, I love that, that term in, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh, no, I'm being mugged. So, so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods, right? Made like a little shed, stayed there. People went to visit him. And, and like, if you've got a problem, you knock on his door and you go, oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, Yeah, I know what you mean. I've, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make him feel better. And then they go again. Now, why has that man got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm going to go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is either a well-known Russian folktale or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. He's a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was well, canonised. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? He was a saint now. Name him one now. Yet this fellow lived in a woods in a hut. Oh, yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint. He's done nothing. If anything, he sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put with it, but I can't put with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put up with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> and yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. Who would, you like to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that, carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> but... No, but I, I couldn't do... Do you know what I mean? That's, that's one job that... Oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! What was she Whoa. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like now? Didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going? Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of like let you off that dream? Is it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, talking of emails and that, right? Uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right, Melbourne, he's uh, he's he's been going on about dolphins and that problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when when that that wind happened, <laughs> um, it was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute. What what bad wind? Um, in in America, they had that Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. Right. And there was, like, a little bay with dolphins in it and right. that, with all guns on them and stuff. What, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They use dolphins, don't they? They say they're an intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all, like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all, like, ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. 
got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? They've how got, can they hold weapons, a rifle? Got, how can they got, hold a rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you mean it's on a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, That's not the point, so let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right? Yeah, with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah. Right? Ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle, yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Hurricane Katrina. Makes a wave and that. They get out of the little bay. Yeah. Still all kitted out. With all the, you know, weapons. You're talking that. bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the email? Well, there, there's no way. There's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted Causing out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a. Whoa. Again, no, they, you've been watching Planet of the Apes. They, oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punk, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some with weapons now, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading it out on email. That's that, that'll cover it and that. So bollocks. Carl, can we have some monkey news before I die? All right. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, yeah. <laughs> this monkey that was knocking about called Ollie. It was in this zoo, um, and and it was the only monkey in there, right? And. Uh, it was getting a bit lonely because, like, it was sharing its sort of time with, say, an elephant and a giraffe. And no, that. it doesn't happen. And they, they didn't really. No, 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 get whoa, whoa, on whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. They do no, not. Let me put, just tell you. They do not put chimpanzees yeah, in. Let me with, tell you. No, but, but it's not true. Why would they share his no, time no, with an elephant and a giraffe? Gervais, it was it was some kind of flat share. They put they put an advert in the student union. Yeah, you know, we've got two rooms to let. African mammal wanted, not specific. A mammoth and a. What I'm saying is, there was other elephants for elephants to knock about with than that. The monkey. It was the only one there. So what happened is the zookeeper right. felt a bit sorry for him. He he started to sort of get pally with him. So at lunchtime, when the zookeeper was sat on the wall having his like ham butties or whatever, mm. he'd sort of go, "You're right." Yeah. And and it used to come over closer and closer. Right? Yeah. Anyway, within a month, he was sat on the wall having his lunch with him. Right. That but anyway, so he sat he sat there, and as time goes on, you yeah. know, he's, he's sort of. Sat with him most of the day. Monkeys yeah. walking around with him, helping feed the other animals and that. No. But then what happened is the, the the zookeeper at the end of the night when he's like locking up and stuff. Yeah. He'd feel bad because he'd be leaving the zoo, and like Ollie's sat there and he's like, "I'll see you tomorrow." And the monkey's like, "Yeah, all right, see you later." <laughs> Looking all fed up because he's got home to go to and he's still stuck in his where he's basically working every day. Right. So he's never... <laughs> He's never going home, right? Now he's sleeping at work, the so, monkey. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, the, yeah. the zookeeper goes home, says to his wife, look, Ollie's uh, having a bit of a time at the moment. So she said, oh, yeah, what's going on? He said, well, uh, <laughs> she's looking a bit fed up, you know, he's, he's sick of it. So she said, bring him home. It didn't happen. <laughs> so this anyway, is in your head. So so she said, yeah, bring it home tonight. So anyway, he's, he's looking forward to going into work and that. He sees Ollie. He doesn't tell him straight away. <laughs> For him later. It gets to the end of the day. Yeah. Anyway, he's like, get your coat. He's like, what? Coat? Right. What do you mean, get no, your no, coat? But, but whatever the equivalent is, right? <laughs> whatever you say to a monkey, it was kind of like, you know, you come in with me, sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So he's going, oh, brilliant. Anyway, no, he's not. So Why he do you mean he's going brilliant? He takes Look, it home. So he gets right? his hat and coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and he I can't believe he's lost, him. right? He, yeah. goes, he goes back to the zookeeper's house. Everything's going well for about a week and a half. Right. right? Treating him really well. He's sat there. You know, he's having a brandy at night before he goes to bed. <laughs> so he said to his wife, look, you're at home all day, right? Oh, Jesus. I'm going to work, I'll leave it with you, yeah. right? So while he stays at home... Yeah. Anyway, uh, as time oh. goes on, a yep. little bit of trouble. Whilst the fella's busy at work, while he starts getting a little bit cheeky, tries it on with a missus. Whoa! Right. Well, how the, the does Carl. a monkey try it on with the missus? Oh, you're this this shit. is classic monkey news. And how does it try it on with so the missus? So he's a bit drunk, <sighs> he's, he's, he stinks of smoke, he tries it on with the missus. How does he try it on with it? I, I don't know all the detail on You don't on know any bit. of the details. I don't know the detail on that bit. But you don't know, know any of the details. No, I don't know the details on that bit. You don't know, know any of the details. So what happened? So while the zookeeper's away, the monkey did play, <laughs> did the zookeeper's wife reciprocate these affections? She probably went along with that at first. You know, she's cooking at home, getting the tea ready, that's walking past, pinching her ass or whatever. <laughs> And it's, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it starts off just like it does, you know, with humans. Starts off as a bit of fun. Before you know it, you know, split up in the end. Anyway, the zookeeper and the what's it? I think the monkey stayed stayed with the with the woman. <laughs> so, it's all there. It's Honestly, all there, mate. You, it, it your imagination. Well, you look should it up. write stories. You get should people, write. 
you get know, people to look it up. It's look, just put in monkey, chimp, Ollie, and it's it's all there. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ..and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, Carl, you rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture. Although your head is not normal, that's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Well... It's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> it's perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. It always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head, um, pug little nose, funny gimp eyes with no expression, hangdog look, um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey, not formed, not human formed. The, the way your expression it, it is like you've had a lobotomy. <laughs> Yeah, head it goes weird at the back. It's got a little nod in it, like a. a, a it's it's really strange. Your face and you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing. But um, talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned Carl that you'd uh, you'd only recently seen a uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh yeah. And it really surprised you because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless one before, person. No. And I actually went along with that. I, I I've never I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, now I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there because apparently there's a huge homeless community in uh, in Los Angeles. So definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person. Mm -hmm. And although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them and she could not find any on that particular day. So, um, again, Canada, obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless. It, it was just a point, though. I don't want people sort of... Well, hold on, though. Wait, wait, I'll stop you there. Hello, Ricky, Steve and Carl. I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person. Not only is he Chinese, but he is also a midget. He's been living on the streets for the last 30 years. He used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive... He's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him ten bucks to take the picture, um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fella. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there sort of looking for these. Because, well, it, because they, you well, know, that's what you requested. No, 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 but all I was saying is I saw one. I didn't start saying, excuse me, can you just give us a smile? I'm taking your picture. <laughs> 
Do you know well, we've had mean? loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of the little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't, don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Maybe well, not. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Don't annoy them. Um, but, I mean, but that is a hell of a sighting, isn't it? We asked for a Chinese homeless, and they gave us a Chinese midget homeless. Many of the listeners are aware, Carl, that you're sort of fascinated by, by smaller people. Um, well, he's fascinated by difference, I think. Yes. Oh. I think he's having a go at people. You know, I mean, having when, a go. When, you, when you sort of stare at someone because they don't look like you, and let's face it, most people don't look like you, you're not having a go, are you? Well, like you I say, first time I saw Steve, I was never, never having a go. It was just, oh, that's different. <laughs> But, but, you know, like, you, you know, Steve, I was never having a go. It's, it's just that yeah. thing of, oh, all right, interesting. What do you mean? No, just, just you know, we've, I've said before about I've got used to it and... Steve it's the got same. used to it. What do you... What you don't know, well, I, you know my feeling with this. I don't, I don't really know where but, he's coming but from. But Steve knows I'm not having a go either. Yeah. Carl used to carry around a book that was called the top 50 freaks of all time. Well, it's interesting you should mention that because we actually had an email from Richie who says that he's, he's been a fan of ours for many years and he's listened to lots of the radio shows we've done in the past and things. And he says, of all the people you've discussed, Carl, in the past, including some of the people from your, uh, your you know, odd magazines, who would you most like to spend the day with, of all those people that you've encountered? Um, favourite, favourite of all. Well, certainly who you would want to spend time with, who you feel would be the most fascinating, the most interesting... You know, I mean, let's just, just recap on well, some of the... Well, Pillow Man, the bloke with no arms, no legs, that can um, uh, roll a cigarette with his mouth. Yeah. No, not impressed with him. <laughs> That's not sufficient. What about the three-legged juggler? So, hang on, let's just recap. This was a man with three legs? Three legs, right. right. And uh, it said his job, he became a juggler. OK. Not using the, you know, the, the <laughs> gift that he'd been given. <laughs> what, would you, what, what are you suggest? Well, anything. Running, <laughs> swimmer. Uh, <laughs> just, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, what, what are the there? others? What are the other ones? There was a picture of a gentleman who was fascinated by him. He used to play the piano. Oh, he's got a tiny oh, head, is not he? Yeah, that's that. Um, that's the one who uh, he, he sort of ages fast. Right. So like every other week, he's having a birthday and stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he's not having a birthday every other week. His body's just aged, so it has the as the, the appearance, uh, the, the his biology is sort of like like he's seventy. But he's only like fifteen. He doesn't. They don't have a birthday every week. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. But yeah, I don't know about knocking about with one a long time though. That's only for a day. Does it depends what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know, if we're going out and about, the pillow man would just be a bit of a drag. Whereas, <laughs> whereas if you know, if you're going for a, a, a walk oh. across, you know, the three-legged guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Brilliant. yeah. Oh. Lots and lots of people emailing just with questions for Carl. Um, just a couple of quick ones for you, Carl. Wendy says, if Carl had to eat the same dinner every day for the rest of his life, what would uh, what would he eat? Um, you see, it depends, doesn't it? I, I I mainly eat just so I keep going. I'm not that bothered about because I don't really taste it anyway. I just shove it down. <laughs> you're like a what? A you're dog. like a horse. I mean, to be honest, it annoys me the way people worry about food now and, and how, how there's so much to choose from. I think it's got out of hand. <laughs> I'll watch... Any form of choice really worries you, doesn't it? No, you don't just, like choice. It, no, choice is good, but not too much. It's like with anything now, if you go into a, a toffee shop, there's like loads Sorry. of different... <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? So you're, you're, you're in a fairy tale. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah you're, you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in, the, uh, in the 19th century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, and you go into a toffee no, shop. No, what no, are you doing? What's your point? You're in a toffee shop. shop. What I'm saying, you, <laughs> yeah. go, you go into a shop full of toffee shops. You just come from stuff. the candlestick maker. <laughs> right? you, go, you, go, oh, you go in there and there's just too much choice. It's like, what? And I, I can stand there up to like four minutes, sort of going. <laughs> up to know? four minutes. <laughs> So, four minutes. so he's in a toffee shop in a top hat. Well, he's only got, four, minutes, he's only got four minutes because he's got to get down to the pea green boat <laughs> that he's sailing off in. Yeah. No, Good but, morrow. Well, forget the toffee. Can I have some of your finest Oxfordshire toffees? So you'd prefer it was just one selection of toffee, that's all they've got? Well, maybe two. <laughs> what I'm saying is, right, there's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like you don't just go... Oh, right, what is the yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book. It? And you look at it all. <laughs> and then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, 
you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish that if it's not cooked right, it can kill you. Right? Yeah. Not worth the risk when there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why, why have are mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a risk, risk yeah. take it off. I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What, uh, we've got a fish that might or might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, a bit of chicken won't kill you. Right. I'll play safe then. I love that. I love that. I love the chicken. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't, don't. You know, I'm never going to use that. I don't think anyway. So, okay. <laughs> Suzanne. You're never going to understand it fully, well, are you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one um, about the one in, in greenhouses and that? No, People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, if that was it, they'd just say no, no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 What do you mean whoa. now? Who now has ever lived in a glass Sorry. house? So this, they went, cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? no, what they mean now, when, when that saying's used now, they mean sort of, you know, plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments. No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about, cos no, you'll they break it. No, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. <laughs> Carl, what is an analogy? Er. Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's it a is, little though, story it? told quickly. Right. To what end? Well, it depends what the story is. You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So people in who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you, because you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. OK, because, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you because it's a glass house. But you have to add a number of other things, uh, another, other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a... <laughs> th these are literals. But just the idea that, in your head, there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. He <laughs> <laughs> still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, oh, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> OK, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like how, you know, you whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something... Mm. It's normally after about five minutes, the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. <laughs> So you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair. Um, you would feel better. You would feel happier that they didn't mention that. Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way you know we we're talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah. Yeah. He got weaker without hair, whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of, like, these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? That's not disguises! It is a disguise. That's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no! Not... Well, then why do they print their name in the paper and have a picture? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, I'm just saying that's, that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought, why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you in the front.
Crown, uh, Crown Court. No, because I love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom. So there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings, and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen eleven people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the uh, the artist doing a view because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks like an interesting character for, and then just a little round. Head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Carl, you said that your New Year's resolution was that you were going to learn something every day. Yeah, Have you learned anything today? If I, if I can. Uh, today, like, I don't know the full facts of it, but... Could I just say that when someone says they learn something new every day, that doesn't count if they forget it the next day. <laughs> no, Because but... that would be Groundhog Day learning. Well, the thing I learned today was about an octopus. Oh, Go yeah. on. What they can do... Is um, you know they've got eight legs and that. Yeah. They can they they can use they can use <laughs> six of them legs to cover their head so they look like a little stone. And use the other two to run off. <laughs> right. But that's... He's, think, he's thinking of Squidly Diddy. Yeah, it's a Disney image in his head. Isn't it? <laughs> he's thinking of They're pink. But, uh, but anyway, uh, but, but anyway, that's that's you know. So that's he's not pink the main singing thing. a song in your mind <laughs> and running off. Yeah. No, but anyway, but something else I learnt, right? Um, it's, it's mainly about animals and that, because that's yeah. normally quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a chicken somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Specific. The, and the owner of it was getting <laughs> fed up because, you know, he had to feed it and that. Mm. But it Embellishment. Wasn't, Embellishment. It wasn't, it Guesswork. Wasn't, no, come on, let's hear it. It yeah. wasn't giving anything back. No eggs. No eggs, right? So he was like, oh, I'm sick of this. Anyway, someone told him, pop a little axe next to its little house... Right, so when it comes out in the morning, thinking, oh, I'll have another lazy day doing nothing, right? <laughs> he saw this axe, and suddenly it was like, oh, right? I'm Next for the day, chop, it thought, yeah. it laid about six eggs. It's rubbish. Through it's through worry. It's rubbish. A chicken wouldn't recognise an axe as a threat. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to reason that, oh, um, I'd better start working or I'll be, I'll be meat. I'll better start... It's absolute rubbish. Once again, it's this ridiculous thing you've got, that, that one personifying animals uh, to, 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 to reasoning powers better than yours... I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you make chickens and monkeys cleverer than you in your stories, which is weird. It didn't happen and wouldn't work. Next. What, <laughs> what else haven't you learnt today? Do you think, then, that it's worth looking after animals, then, if, if there isn't any memory? If they don't know what's happening anyway, you're always going on about don't be cruel to things. Why would you ever want to be cruel to an animal, whether it can reason or not? No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean really cruel, but I mean, like, like there's an advert on that's, that's on in the, you know, in Britain advertising some supermarket, right? And it's saying, you know, we look at... Before, you know, we kill our chickens and what have you, they have a great life. They slide yeah. the voice over and you see happy chicken. Yeah. And it's going, uh, we give it a good little house to live in. It's got straw. Yeah. It eats good. Yeah. And then we kill it, right? Yes, well, that's better, isn't it? Well, no, I don't think it is, though, is it? Because at the end of the day, if I was that chicken, right, <laughs> I'm that chicken loving my life. I can't believe me luck. Right, it's got its nice little field that it's working on. Yeah, it's got its nice food and everything, but it's gonna die. Yeah, we're all gonna die. But then, if you were like a rubbish chicken, <laughs> that would like a rubbish life, you'd be going, oh, kill me. Carl, <laughs> 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 they're not thinking what's gonna happen tomorrow. They don't know that they're gonna get they're gonna get for the chop, are they? A chicken's not going. I'm fed up with this. I can't wait for that axe to be used on my neck. Yeah. Well, that, that's another... Th that, now you've mentioned the cutting off of an head, right? Yeah. On the chicken. That's something else I've learned, right? It's like a pinball is mine. Amazing. Isn't it? Ding, dong, boom, dang, ding, ding, da, da, oh, head, ding, ding, chicken, di, 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 head off, bing, <laughs> dong. No, no, right, but um, this was in a proper science magazine as well. Right? Yeah. So you can't have a go. This wasn't something on the internet. This was printed in a so, magazine. So, you read it. OK, and what was it? And, here, it? and here comes the filter... It's going to come out nonsense. Right. Well, you could have Professor Stephen Hawking sitting there whispering stuff in your ear, and it could all be true, but when you said it, gobbledygook. <laughs> well, let's see, then. Let's see, right? This, what they've done, they've done another experiment, right? Yeah. They've cut somebody's head off, right? And they've worked out that once... When, when the head comes off the body, yeah. it stays alive and that... No. ..for 30 seconds. Well, no, they, they don't know that. They can never know that. No, they did it. They did this no. experiment. What's alive? The What's head. alive? 
But the, well, yeah, no, it, 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 uh, well, there's loads of issues here. One, no one's experimenting with human beings cutting their head off, Carl. Well, two, mm. no, 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 no. So you read no. this in what? Executioner's Monthly. This is, yeah. is no two, proper... Carl. It's what your definition of alive is, because you can be alive and have no conscience. No, no, but this is this is where it gets weird, right? Yeah, it's, well, we, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> yeah. You talking about it? So the head's off, right? Yeah. And what they did was they chucked a load of questions at it. <laughs> All sanctioned by the government. Yeah, this is yeah. all fine. So the head, the head lands perfectly on the neck and goes, <coughs> what do you want to know? And it said, it said, so they're asking questions and it's going, do you know what? To be quite honest, I don't answer, answer your question. I'm a little bit annoyed about the execution still. Well, that, that was the interesting thing. They said it's about... No, it's not. It didn't happen, Carl. Let me hear it. Oh, don't talk Let shit. Let me hear it. What are you talking about? Who are these people around in white coats going, quick, ask it a question. It's bleeding. Right. So they said for about 25 to 30 seconds. The last five seconds, it is sort of like, can't be bothered answering them. <laughs> Right, prior to that. But, prior but, to apart, that. From, oh, but apart from that, they, oh. were, they were chucking stuff. I don't think it spoke. I don't think it was like, yeah, two and two, four and stuff. It was more, um, it was to do with blinking. So blink once if you say oh, yes, yeah. blink twice. So, so I told it, I said, listen, when you die, you're probably not going to be able to talk because your jaw's going to be on the ground. You're not going to be able to open your mouth. If you do, you'll fall over backwards and hit your head. Now, listen, blink one for yes and two for what? no. Yeah, right, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, is the axe nice and sharp? Yeah, promise, you're you talking promise? shit again. <laughs> you promised to do it? Yes. All yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah. The thing is, they wouldn't be able to do it with you because if they cut your head off, it would just roll. It would roll away because it's perfectly spherical. They would go, oh, no, there's Plus, no... Oh. it takes about 20 seconds whenever you ask Carl anything for the <laughs> yeah. question to process and for him to start to formulate an answer. Carl, it's what we've all been waiting for. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. All right, well, this one sent in from uh, from Sam in New York, right? And it's about a fire that happened, right, in a really... Do you know, like, in New York, they have loads of big buildings, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, really, really tall ones and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was a fire in one of them, right? So they did as expected. They called up, you know, fire brigade and that. They turned up, right? Uh, fire engine parked up. It's like, right, where's the fire? And they said, oh, it's on, like... A uh, floor 100 or whatever. And they said, oh no, we've brought the fire engine with the short ladders. <laughs> Stupid mistake, but go on. Right, so anyway, so they said, well, how are we going to get up there? Yeah, yeah. Right. we can't. But if they've only brought the short ladders. No, we can't, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was uh, monkey news. So, uh... th so they said, well, there's a lot of like grippage. <laughs> Because they, they made up words, the uh, firemen, yeah, the NYPD firemen. There's a lot of grippage! On the side of the building uh. and stuff. So anyway, they said, why don't we just go and get a monkey, right? So they got, oh. they got a monkey. Oh, yeah. That's a is bit that, of a jump. Is they that just... policy now in, uh, in, in the New York Fire Department? Well, the, the, you know, you've got to think quick, haven't you, at the end of the day. If people are up there, you don't, yeah. you don't start querying if it works or not. You try everything that, that you can to, yeah. to help someone out, right? That's the first thing I thought of, was it, a monkey? So it was quicker for them to go and get a monkey than to go back and get the long ladders? Why don't they get Spider-Man? <laughs> <Okay, laughs> Why don't they get, get Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, cool Spider-Man. Yeah, cool Spider-Man. So anyway, so they got they got a monkey down there, and they said, right... Where well, did they get it from? We don't know, from the local zoo or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they said, look, let's, uh, you know, we've got to remember, there's, there could be someone up there, um, right. and it'll shock them a bit if, <laughs> if, if, a monkey, looking, if a monkey comes in, right? Yeah. So they said... <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd care. Get it their, their building's on fire, they're not going to yeah. go, oh, it's weird, there's a monkey at the window. <laughs> They'll be screaming, <laughs> save me! Oh, there's a monkey. No, so, anyway, from them. so they said, right, we'll just get it a little small uniform and that, the smallest <laughs> you've got. <laughs> but, whoa, well, hold on, though. Actually, where are you going to get that? I'm going back to the... Um, going back to the uh, station. We'll get the long ladders while you're there. No time. No time. No, I, I no. bought the small uniform. I just didn't bring the long <laughs> yeah. ladders. <laughs> you're an idiot! So oh. anyway, it goes up there. It's got all the kit on and what. It's yeah. got its little ardour on and all that. It grabs... Uh, there, was, there was, like, a little person up there. Manages to grab that. No, a little... Who was up there, then? It was just someone just a... that was just the right size for a monkey to be able to rescue, which is handy. Because <laughs> if it had been anyone else, like a larger person or a family, we'd all be yeah. screwed. No, I don't know about the size of it, but it's just the story saying how, like, uh, it was quite a big, big monkey and that it was good at breaking down doors. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was good at climbing into small spaces and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Anyway, but it managed it's big, to... So it's big enough to carry a, a fully grown man, but small enough to climb through a, a, a cat flap. Yeah, sure. so... Uh, Which is handy. So, anyway, it managed to... You know, get have the person. boots on as well. It got got the person, everything, and uh, now it says it. You know, it's sort of uh, 
it's on call if, if they ever need it again. <laughs> sure, and if they ever get anywhere again and they've forgotten the long letters, but there's plenty of grippage, they just call for cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ..and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know. He's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What, so...? Oh. <sighs> the, the... With a brain. <laughs> He's coped this far. <laughs> yeah, I did a bit of an experiment on this, right? Brilliant. It's my job at home to, to wash up, right? Suzanne does... She gives you all the really big responsible <laughs> ones. Yeah. She, she, she sort of, like, pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well, you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? And um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff, uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right, if I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> and so what did you do? So I just sort you of You sliced it. off your thumbs. I, I just sort of <laughs> held them in. And it's amazing how, like, it took me ages just having that, that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared. Th 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 these are milestones in human evolution, the opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. Th these, are, these are massive things in, in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean... Before we got here, there was people who, uh, whose eyes were looking in their head. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult, it took you ages. So you, you, didn't, you didn't just give, give up once you realised how essential thumbs were. No, you actually washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in and Carl's there, just covered in water and, and very liquid suds, standing on a pile of broken crockery. Yeah, lun plunging his face into the sink every three, 30 <laughs> seconds and just swishing his head around. <laughs> <laughs> but we talked about the, the washing up thing before, I don't know, and uh, I sort of look out out of a window, so the sink's in front of the window. Yeah. And that's why I quite like washing up, because I can just look out onto the street, see people going past. There's, like, a local homeless fella called Franco. You know, I look out, that he's all right and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some, uh, sort of, there's some Chinese people who live on in a flat, right, really small flat, and they're up till all hours. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning, right? they're always really noisy in that. But above them... There was some woman, right, who, um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no no bra and that. Naked. Yeah, just... That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about, you know, on that. So I was like, oh, what's going on there? So I carried on washing up and that, right? 
and uh, <laughs> kept looking, and then I was looking and she looked at me. Right, so we made eye contact. Sure. So I was like, oh, God, right. So um, what I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that. I thought if I just show a little bit of, little bit of sort of arse cheek, then it's kind of like, right, we, we quits. Right? <laughs> I don't understand the thinking. So, so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up, right? She sees me with like my pants sort of down a little bit with my arse out. She said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Don't look now." I said, "But there's a woman over the road, right? We know pants on and that." She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> He explains the rules, and Suzanne's meant to go. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't. So, so hang on. So you you, you showed a bit of your ass. You turned presumably to show the ass. Or well, waggled the ass at the woman. I had to lift it up a little bit on the sort of on the draining board. What? Hang on though. What, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction when she saw a bit of your ass? What happened? When she saw my ass. Yeah. Well, then I wasn't looking because I thought, in a way, I don't want I don't want it to look like. Well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just Look. thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out I of it. I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, you know, a much better film had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the, to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky, though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? OK, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert... Your little round headstone. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, cos at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> so everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It'd look daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So what, all it is is... I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, <laughs> I'm wondering if that could almost be the B-side to... Uh, B-side to Nob at Night. I could eat a Nob at Night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but but sometimes like these people who who are now now dead, but everybody raves about them. What I mean is, if I'll just answer the question: Who would you be and why? It's someone you no, admire no, no. or you think had a good life. But, just answer the question. But what question. I mean is, it's good to be remembered. Like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke, but I wouldn't want the asshole that he had. So I don't want to live his life. Right. But it's good to be. You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of uh, uh, saving the world. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would I want to, whose job would oh, I want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> So when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may, maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries with, you know, people who have a lot of money come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. I mainly know. because he's got, you know, he's got more more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's going to get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor... You've got the one out. If there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me, then I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Where is with, Bruce? Yeah. With, with, with successful life and happy life, there's more for you to lose, is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished the job 
that's uh, that I've been at for 10 years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got... My, my timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. So now suddenly... Five I've, until seven, washing up, with no thumbs. <laughs> I, I like... I've sort of turned into, like, an old person where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy are now the main event. So but like, hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne's shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> the word cobbler. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly... Because last, like... last time you were going to the toffee shop, <laughs> yeah. and now you're going to the cobblers, next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> but all, all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out. I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's all right. He's, you know, he's doing... You know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in, like, a, a bed set and he had two tellies. <laughs> he had, he had like, one that, that the sound didn't work on oh, and right. one that the picture didn't. But both together... It worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but he was. He, Whoa! You can't just let that slide. Why did he sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just liked boats and stuff, and uh, he sort of. <laughs> yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on. Boats are better to sail on. Well, he just he just had it in there. It's a bed set. It was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this. He's got this. He's moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy, so he's thinking, well, rather than it get in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a he was a cobbler, <laughs> and he he used to like repair like my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he, he'd always sort of overdo them, right? <laughs> what so, do you mean? Like um, <laughs> fancy. Do you know like pimp my ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a, the stereo. Yeah. Well, no. There was it, horns. It, it, it's like... <laughs> Here go comes Carl stripes down the side. Yeah, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkerton. He's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he just makes shoes that would last forever. So instead of putting like one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built-up shoes <laughs> that you never see. He'd just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever. But they did. But they looked like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like they, suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out. But he's he's a cobbler, and you know it's work. That's that's always always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with to 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 to, to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So I just took them to the cobblers and that, and that that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog. You know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they, what they pay and that. And I thought, if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station. Dare I say it, on... I, I, can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an all right wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that. But to go from the head of a department on a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. I, no, but I, it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, but that's, that's commendable if that's true, but, it, OK. And that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do... I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining. I'm just thinking if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll, I'll go round to her and say, well, how much are you paying? I'll take t- the dog a walk and sure. stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up. Potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It, it, it's, uh, it's very, very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. And getting a lot of stuff about uh, philosophy. Oh, yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes, is, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes, yeah. the French philosopher. Yeah. What was what's, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email. Someone said, uh, what do you think of, of him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his 
his own existence. Uh, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. He was thinking about that. He was thinking, how do I know all this is true, everything around me? And he thought, uh, well, I can see it and I can smell it and I can hear it. And he went, oh, yeah, my senses can be fooled. I could be dreaming. But if I'm dreaming, then at least I'm alive. At least I have some sort of consciousness. So if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always being... And were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> and it's just like, what, what was the rush? I to teach Latin. What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right, now, would you say he's, he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. Right, if he's that bright, do you know he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Well, he's right. not, he's well, not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo. What's the story with the egg? He was on holiday or something, right? And... <laughs> he was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He mm. was at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the sort of... This bird was what? A great orc? What, what, so, what size bird killed him a, with his was, egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And and the way they used to crack... Well, an ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> what bird is this? Dropping its egg to let the kids out? You're a maniac! You are a maniac! And Plato <laughs> had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, oh, there's, there's a little rock, I'll drop the egg. Hit him on the head. Killed him. Now, this is what I was saying before about... You... I'm, either, well, I'm letting too much go now, cos I'm so desensitised to his nonsense. I let him go. The bird saw Plato and said, there's a rock down there. Yeah. Well, if he's dropping, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying, though, right? Before, about knowledge and that, how, how knowledge is, is hassle or success is That's hassle. That, I, now, th I think that was Newton... <laughs> Knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why Why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, an egg on his head? Because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out, yeah. he could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard, his knowledge killed him. He, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine? Oh, a stitch in time saves nine, yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't. I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy nilly. Um, willy nilly. <laughs> willy nilly. <-nilly. laughs> okay. Willy nilly. No, yeah. no. But I, I, again, it's one of them. Like like last week, I've heard of it, but but what I've does never... willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch so in time so save? So you understood nine willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, it I mean, nice, you used it, it. You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So it's if not... you got a, so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out of a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching... A stitch sometimes time, today. ..say in 15 or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. 
Do you think yours is less poetic than, than A Stitch in Time Saves Nine? So yours is, this is what you want it to be a quote, right? Well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like I never go to the doctor's. Unless it's really That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die, because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this. And she'll go, oh, yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What, they what just pop... What year are we in? They... <laughs> what are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? <laughs> no, what I mean is, we've got... Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick. You, you, yeah, would you prefer it to a be... A mechanical thumb, a robot good. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Well, well they well, put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. If no, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, that'd be a, 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 up your back passage. They'd, what I are you just, worried I, about? I don't think... They, they need to do are that. You embarrassed? Are you age? embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fella popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. right? You've got to go there. You yeah. sat on the bus stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour, I'm going to have a finger up the arse, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem? And they go there? in, they check your heart, they probably. <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's... Yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang. You, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they... <laughs> wow! can <laughs> they Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be all right. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then... Who knows the... what trouble you're going to cause? No, but then at you least... You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna, come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> OK, I think it's probably time. I've just Let me just check my watch. Yeah, it's monkey news time. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. So this week, anyway, it's about it's more about tall buildings and stuff. Oh, yeah. It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh, right? yeah. And uh, you know what builders are like? They sort of move about, don't they, from, from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah, well, once they've built it, the building's done and they move on to yeah, build some more. Building, to building, just building, yeah. So he goes to his next job and that, right? Who does? The builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to, like, the, 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 boss, the, the boss of this building who's building it. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK. Yeah. And he, and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> OK. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so he says, uh, he says, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says, we're working on this one here. He said, uh Get going on it, like, there's your bricks and your cement and stuff, get on with it. Yeah. So the... So Any plans? So they, so they... Just build. Just just start building. Yeah. Go up. They're getting on with it and stuff, it's all going well. Right? Yeah. Um, but he notices that there's someone working eye up, mm. right, on, on the <laughs> okay. top bit. So anyway, he's he's saying to, like, the other workers, he's going, what's... Who's that up there? Who's that up like, there? He's, yeah. he's working on his own. The little, what, the little fella, was he? And, the uh, little hairy fella up there. He's the little hairy fella up there with the top, uh, hard hat. And, and the other fellows are going, look, you know, don't ask questions, you know, the boss decides who he takes on. We're mm. happy to be getting paid here. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask questions! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, he's, he's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything. He said, no, just let him get on with it. You know, we work well as a team. So anyway... <laughs> what nonsense is so, this? So, oh, he believes all this. Yep. So he sees the boss and he goes, that fella up there, he's the fella up there, he's, he's pretty good. And he's like, look, you know, just get on with the job, yeah, I'll pay you. Let's just all get on with our jobs, that. <laughs> Lunchtime comes, they're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwich. He's just thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah. Is he? He's just still going. Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, he says, isn't that fella up there uh, 
can I come down and join us for lunch? He said, uh, he said, like I said, mate, don't don't worry about him. Yeah. Right? He he's said, very well, secretive. I'm suspicious about this fella. I don't, yeah, know, I don't, know, he said, I don't know why he's working through his lunch. I don't know why he's not scared of heights. I don't know why he's swinging from girder to girder. It's weird. Go on. So he said, oh, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there. He said um, he's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. He probably needs some more nuts to... Uh... Right, sure. And what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food or...? So he said, what, nuts? He said, yeah, just uh, there's a bag full of them there. Just, just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job. So anyway, he picks these nuts up. Nuts, right? yeah. Just ups them on. He thinks they're not that heavy, no. considering, you know, I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they? Like nuts big and bolts and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh, no, what's in there? Nuts. What, you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat, oh. right? So they send the bag up, and he's thinking, what's all that about? He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out. You can see that he's a little chimp running about, so he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why so, isn't he? Because he's working for an organisation that's, you know, there's unions for this sort of stuff, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. They've got a chimp riveting this building together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not scary. He's wondering if they're breaking union rules. So he, he, go, he you goes... You half talk some so he goes, shit, and he the goes boss. to the boss and he goes, look, I've worked out what you're playing at here. Yeah. He said, all them Is out the there. boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> so he goes, look, you know, we just all try to earn a living here. He said, uh, don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him. Don't, don't interfere. He's paying him? And he's saying, look, I, I'm just not happy with this. It's, it's not allowed. So the boss was saying, well... We pay honest, peanuts, mate, we get monkeys. He said, to be honest, mate, you know, uh, he, he's a great worker. <laughs> he's known for doing what he does. He's a good grafter. <laughs> if one of you's going to go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go, cos he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah. He was made redundant None because of that of happened. He, he, was, he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off and that. And that's no. where that saying about... Um, you know, like, there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America. It's like, like a, a chimp off the old block. Is is where? <laughs> so that's monkey news. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, cos, Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off, you take at least five or six weeks' holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now, you're meant to be doing this, and yet you still so go... So your whole life's a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday to... You, you, you potter around... You, it, you, your, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers, so why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that... You know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Gran Canaria. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um. Well, it, there isn't much else to do at Gran Canaria. I mean, I, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and just... you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock, which was just. But it was what the you had your fingers burned? Why did you go back? 
because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you think, <laughs> they well, obviously the next are one... getting away with it. But why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, isn't it? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though... What do you make of this place? you enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was I just bet, a big rock, but did you... you were, I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just... Uh, well, um, it was big hotel, like, big, massive places where there's loads of people, and, you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, 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 no. To me. You've nailed that. But I've the... been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but... <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the, sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is, like, mental. And and it was all, it was it was full of old people really. Yeah. I mean that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write write stuff down. And like. do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, the, the, the most the, famous diary, uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a, you know, a loft, knocking stuff up, not much going on in her life at that point, yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas you've been to Grand Canaria, yeah. I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You, did, you, did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just... Uh... Oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary is meant to be sort can, of... Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl... Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of oh, going... this is... Please, give me it. Oh, my God. I mean, this isn't... I haven't just... Look how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those God. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's... Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out... <laughs> Right, uh, everyone would have heard it clanked down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look, give us oh, that. Do you, us know, that. do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? There's no Amazing. point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best okay. to look oh, at, look at Oh, look, oh, my God, it starts on the first day. This is, this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today, woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of, on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention. That would be good! Right. A, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod. How, uh, and how would this device work, this watch? I mean, how would you, uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins. And no, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had, like, a little watch on... But how does it work? You can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you're in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work, just pop it on your wrist? Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Grand Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's querying his own his own. Design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's invented it. Now he's not even <laughs> sure. Uh, a fellow on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He <laughs> was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, you can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. 
Everywhere's pretty rough, paving and sloopy. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. <laughs> day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant. We're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing! Well, you may as well let me read on a bit more. But this is amazing. Well, look, come back to this is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just just that... Uh, you know, when, I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right... And I was thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I being don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have... Carl, Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well, that's... Yeah, that's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when... It, because, because I <laughs> that thought... That explains a lot. <laughs> it's great that you have to think about whole sentences. Because I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought... Does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, mm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his... In, in his, his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice In computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world! <laughs> uh, That's the entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> You've done nothing so far. <laughs> He's done nothing. He's got a hip. <laughs> Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. He just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. Everything's in the diary. I just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in, <laughs> yeah. breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his T-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak. <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. We go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't... Uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in in weather that... If it was like that here, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it. Put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single it's day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up, because what I find as well is, I think earlier on, before I went away, I think I did learn something, and because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So... What was that? I just was thinking then, I forgot it now, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all, because I remembered 
the end of it before I read it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But, yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no-one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once and I just said to my mate Phil... How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, <laughs> Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud... It's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato. I don't know why I thought Spud was a... Was a cool nickname. I just sort of. I think it's, it's a grown up it, name, though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like. Uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids' books, like The Famous Five or like The Bash Street Kids. They'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. And here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive. And it, Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang. And it's I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe, and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, never really it? caught. And he just went, Oh yeah, right. And no one started and I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course Hey Spud, the first time I said Spud, you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um not not really I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Whether he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you had him, right? right? There was uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg, yeah. Which is yeah. I assume time. it's because he was at the same IQ as you, yeah. or, or or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There was there was uh, there was my uncle Tattoo Stan. All oh, right. right. Yeah. He had he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God. The the problem was because he did his tattoos himself. Oof. The ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so so there was him. Oh, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, uh, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here, that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly... I think it started off with, like, Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, cos there was that, that thing from, like, about 1970... Convoy. It was Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so I had one of them and the handle... I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had I had a couple. I had... Um, there was Pilky 01, cos, right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then... Um... <laughs> that, is, that is people scrabbling. For, oh, I, want yeah. Pil- <laughs> I want a Pilky O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, 
because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy, because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's boxer boy in that. Yeah. So just add them two, and I used to just go on there and... Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, what's your handle? You go, box boy, what's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, but then, but then you'll say, like, then you go, oh, uh, uh, what's your 20? What's that mean? That's, where are you? Well, why don't you say, where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who, who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right, so just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. I, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what, codes, that's, what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You set them up and that. Go on, and tell me, tell me the code, then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the enigma. Yeah. Right, now, here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's that's. How oh, old what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning? Of course. Yeah. So what? The, what's the answer? Come back. You go. Uh, I'm fifteen. Fourteen. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again. Someone will come in and go uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means like there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, "This sounds interesting." Yeah, no, it does. Unlikely. It? Yeah. And they they want to join in, so they sort of go side on. You go side on, bring it in, right? And they go, "All right." <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's well, your that, twenty? That's a round again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. What's your twenty? <laughs> How many candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> it's that time again. Do the jingle. Oh, monkey, you! Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> OK. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Though. OK, good. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, you... Right, do you know it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again? Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year, is it? Yeah. And uh the 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 last one that happened Four years ago, yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no. Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? Of not. No, no. So, so, so anyway it's not gonna be that because it wouldn't be true. No, yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events. Um Bobsleigh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you know how it works. Well, you it's need like four sleigh. men. Is it four men or five four men? men? It's yeah. four. So it's definitely four men that you need, need on four a team. Two. Is it and two? And there's two team bobsleigh. But as well. they're always men. Is that right, Rich? Let <laughs> me just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they and they also well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed. And two, there's no way they could disguise it because not only would they see it straight away, right? But they have blood tests, <laughs> right? Okay, which so, would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a blood test. Non it's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human. Taking involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, OK, so carry on. So yeah. anyway, the, the, the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh, yeah. But the problem was there was, there was like, two members mm. who were getting all, like, the press and stuff. Oh, right, yeah. Anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the, the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in. Oh. So they were like, you're joking, we've, we've qualified, we're getting into, like, the main race and everything. Mm. You can't leave us now. And he said, well, you could do it all... On your own before, you know, you, the way you were acting and that, you didn't yeah. need me, so I'm going. Yeah. So the clock's ticking, it's getting close to the big race and everything. Of course it is, yeah. They're like, what, what are we going to do here? The substitute right. they took with them. What are they well, going to do? Must have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, they didn't. They didn't, they didn't have any of them and that. Well, it's, you know, a lot of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, no, or, yeah. or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, you know, <sighs> you won't want to let your country down and that. And they're like, what are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyone. Anyway, the, the time comes to the race. Seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay. Yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing around the track faster than normal. They, they're beating their old records. Right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got a little bit smaller. Ah. Oh, right? Is he in so, is he in the bobsleigh or is he pushing? He's he's in it. 
Oh, right. Okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet, though. He's we can't see what he looks on, like. He's got the kit face. on. Uh, yeah. Nobody knows who he is, but the country's loving it. They're yeah. like, well, it looks like we're going to break all our records, you know. Good. It's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left, he's, he's sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could have been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are, like, going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. Oh. <gasps> A lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit sort of mental and whizzes off, off the track. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because, you know, you can do more damage to the, the well, neck. Well, don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah. Please, so they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't. He, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight yeah. like some of the members we used to have. But he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're oh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything, though? Anyway, we reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were like going, ah, you're joking, I don't remember you? this, I don't remember this you, at not, you, Well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this is bullshit. crazy talk, it's all shit. It's This all is shit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where did you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but, the, but the weird thing is, that backed it up. Well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. <laughs>